Episode 1 cut content from the Classroom of the Elite Season 3. We got Baseless Yupen here. Let's see what he has to say. So Classroom of the Elite is finally back with Season 3. Yeah. And this time adapting Volumes 8 to 11.5 and completing the first year arc. 8 to 11.5 in 12 episodes is not that bad, is it? I guess season one and season two, I mean, volume one that we're reading right now of the light novel is fucking seven hours long, but still, it's it's not too bad. 13 episodes? Let's go. Exciting stuff, right? Until you realize the fact that all yeah. five of these volumes are going to be packed into 13 episodes. <sighs> I mean, that's the limitation, right? I, could you imagine if we had like, like two core, you know, fucking 24 episodes no split you know what fuck it do a split core i don't care just just give me like fleshed out detailed classroom of the elite to pack these episodes or this the content in 12 episodes 13 is just like pretty hard but as an anime only from season one and season two i could still kind of follow with the plot line a lot of things were cut off but still you know to put into perspective how bad that is eminence in shadow season one adapted the first two volumes in 20 episodes And I wonder at times because Classroom really is a, is just like so heavy on dialogue. Eminence and Shadow, not really, right? So maybe I don't know. I, I but but that argument goes the, the other way around. If you have more dialogue, then you should need more episodes. But is the dialogue fluff? When I read the light novel together with you guys in the in the stream, it feels like sometimes. There's a lot of extra information that is not critical information. It's definitely helpful and it definitely fleshes out the story. But like just getting the core dialogues and just like skip cutting some parts out. It still made sense. But again, I, I, could you imagine 20 episode season? Episodes and things still had to get cut out. And COD season 3 starts off with the first episode adapting 160 plus freaking pages in a single episode. 160 in an episode. I was originally planning to make videos on the cut content for every episode this season. Do it. But after watching this episode, I realized that it would take less time to talk about the things that did get adapted. And so I switched my plan to reviewing the episodes while yes. occasionally talking about cut content that I think is important for you guys to know moving forward. I think that any video essayists like anime channels out there that's like doing video reviews like this they should focus on the light novel cut content because this is like remarkability anybody can just fucking make an anime review about this episode right but if you actually know light novel content that was cut out without giving spoilers i think that's incredibly valuable and lets me farm your content along with cool facts and things i'm sad had to get cut out <laughs> Look at Giga Chat Koenji right in the middle, sit in the middle. Ishizaki in the corner, beta. Also, feel free to comment down below anything you found confusing about the episode or did not understand properly. I'll do my best to answer your questions and explain. Right, let's go. Things. Let's with go. With all that out of the way, though, let's finally dive in. So, the episode starts off with skipping chapter one. With <laughs> Uh, good start. The episode starts with just all right. Chapter one of the light novel gone. This was a monologue from Horikita Manabu. Suzune is. They skipped Manabu's monologue. Are you fucking kidding me? One of my favorite things from the light novel is Koji's monologue, where someone's monologue, them just like talking and just thinking in their Her head. And him talking about regretting not having a close friend that he. How do they cut this shit? It could be fucking 10 seconds to just say of Manabu looking out the window thinking, hmm, I wish I had a close friend. He wishes he had a close friend? Could trust from the bottom of his heart. Se Is that what Koji- Oh no. Well, Manabu, can he trust Koji though? Because Koji would just use him, you know? I feel like Koji might betray his heart, you know? But interesting. Setting the tone for the rest of the volume. Setting the tone for the rest of the volume, implying that Manabu Koji's ship is gonna be the thing in season 3. So we're done with the Ryuin ship, right? K is pretty much our side hoe. The main booty clap, sorry, the booty cheeks that we're gonna clap is Manabu. Then we move on to chapter 2, which is where episode 1 starts. Alright. And this is where... <laughs> EK sexually harassing Chabs as usual. Uh -huh. And we learned that 
Class D has finally moved up the ranks. C and class. Is now class C. Yeah, which is so weird because now I have to refer to them as Class C, but everybody still refers to, you know, the original structure. Plus, isn't our original plan to pretty much drop back into Class D after expelling Kushida, which. I'm not sure it's gonna happen with the amount that Susan is like vouching for her. Then introducing us to the special exam of this arc, which is basically a joint training camp where you have to team up with members from other mm -hmm. classes and even upperclassmen to complete challenges together. And the exam will finally end with a test. Just call it Horikita's class? No. I'm gonna call Horikita Manabu's class Horikita's class. I ain't calling this Susan's class. You know whose class this is? Yamagod's class. The anime cuts out some moments where we see that characters such as E. Look at those eyes, dude. <laughs> How is this? Remember in the light novel volume one during the scene where Chabs is about to pretty much hit, the, hit us in the back of the head with the steel chair because everyone spent their points. Before that happens, I think EK says, no, no, no. Koji thinks in his head, oh, Chabs is looking a little more pissed today. Is she on her period or something? <laughs> and he's like, I shouldn't say that out loud. But then EK just says it out loud. <laughs> this dude has full confidence, Giga Chad. They have matured a bit. Yes, even side characters like them get developed in the volumes. Yes. Same. And other side characters that you don't even like, these are unlocked NPCs, right? These are characters that have like, they just show up for scenes. They don't really have monologue. They apparently like get developed later on too, which is really amazing. With Sudo and Horikita's relationship dynamic being more fleshed Dog. out. And Dog. Dog and master. the general rules of the exam are same, they cut out a lot of details about the exam. Someone said Hondo in chat. Here, here's Hondo, guys. Are you guys ready for Hondo? Ready? There he is, right over there. He made it into another fucking scene. How does this dude keep doing it? If you look at this scene right here, look, look, look. Hondo has more face being shown than Susan here. Isn't that insane? What the fuck? About the exam, I'm not gonna mention everything in case they do decide to talk about them in the next episode. But one thing I felt was quite important is mentioning, even though the first years are gonna be teamed up, there's also going to be a bigger group that's gonna consist of students from all three years. Oh. The anime also cuts out the rewards and penalties from the test, especially the fact that the rewards your group receives will be greater depending on how many students from different classes there are basically and the more diverse so like obviously if you have a diverse class you know they're all strangers so it's like more of an incentive for them to get better rewards because like it's like it's like harder i, I guess that makes sense encouraging teamwork but yeah. they at least mention the fact that the leader of each small group that scores below the average threshold don't they get the punishment instead, right? Said by the school will be expelled. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, I would not want to be the leader. Fuck that noise. So we made Kushida the leader. <laughs> Is she going to get expelled though? Koji said he, that's his plan. His plan on Christmas Eve that he told to Ryuin on their date was, I'm going to get to class C, and then we're going to fall back down because that bitch Kushida is gone. And then Ryuin's like, damn. You're fucking savage. And Even by my standards. And also choose another member of the group to expel. If and the leader can choose another member of the group to expel if they've played a part in the group's downfall. So, 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 so let's imagine Kushida's group fall, um, falls apart. So this is an interesting condition. If they'd played a part in group's downfall, how do you really determine that, right? How does one really accurately assess, did this student play the part in the group's downfall, right? That's very subjective. But if Kushida were to get expelled because their group fucking failed, then technically she could take Susan out with her, right? That's the mechanics at play here, maybe? Realizing the insane penalties, group vote? Ayano Koji thinks of the worst case scenario where a bunch of Class C students get expelled mm. and sends a few tips to K which is what his message after the cut off the bus was about. Ah, oh, I was wondering about this text message. We didn't know about that, but okay, okay. And one moment they cut out that really annoyed me was Ayano Koji thinking that even though he won't be able to protect everyone in class, you gotta C, pick. You gotta be selective. He at least wants to keep K Hirata. Oh, actual names, because in this thing he says, I gotta be, I can't afford to save everyone. I gotta be very selective in who I pick. So K Hirata and Horikita save. That's it? No one else? 
Well, Kawenji doesn't need to be saved. He, he's, he's a Giga Chat. But, like, if we need to save people, I guess these are the most valuable and the most vulnerable. Who else is there that Sakura <laughs> ignored? Our study group ignored? Well, <laughs> who else is there? Uh, is there a Yukimura Keisei? Ig uh, nah, Yukimura will be fine. And even though they're not the top priority, our friend group, dude. Our friend group. He also hopes for the survival of his friends from. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm being mean. I'm being mean. He actually does care about the survival of his friend group. I wonder why. Cause they're not really friends to him. You know, what does he? Con does he consider them friends? Actually, I don't know. Cause as much as Anakoji wants to experience a normal human life. I don't think they're really friends. They're useful tools. Better than NPC, right? They're useful tools that are kind of friendly. Maybe there's some semblance of friendship forming. But right now, I just don't think that friendship is really how he views the toolbox. <laughs> A sort of toolbox. Guys, come on. <laughs> All right. We have a crowbar. We have a fucking hammer. We have a fucking, uh, what, 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 what else is it? We got a fucking, you came in, I'll give him a power tool. He's a fucking De DeWalt, DeLuat, whatever fancy brand fucking power screw there is. Honestly, I don't even know this guy in the fucking middle here. Who the fuck is he? I know he's in the friend group. He serves one purpose. In season two, didn't he get injured? Right! This dude got injured so Koji could run. So actually, Giga Chat, I like him already. The Ayano Koji group. I really wish they would have kept this scene in. After that, all the students get off the bus and we get the bet between mm. Nagumo Miyabi, who's the current student council president, and Gilgamesh. Horikita's brother. This was pretty much the same as the light novel, aside from the fact... This guy's eyes, man. Something about him just looks so sinister, right? Just the look in his eyes, you can already tell. He's kind of like a snake. But I want to I wanna just like know what he's about. So far, it seems like he's like a male Kushida type. All the girls simp for him. He's very good looking. He's probably super like smart, obviously. He can probably scheme. I'm not sure if he's as good as... Well, while Anakoji is slowly developing his social riz to manipulate girls, right? You saw what he did to Kei. It's like, oh, I, I knew that you would catch notice. And he's like, oh... What the fuck? This guy kind of already has that, right? But he's probably ahead of Anakoji in that department. And the fact that he can manipulate them. Anakoji can manipulate girls. It's just that he needs other people. He needs a proxy, right? He needs like a middleman to do it for him. But Gilgamesh does, does it straight up. There's pros and cons for both strategies. Anakoji's methods makes him kind of hidden. And, you know, it, it, it makes it such that everyone else that he uses are the... They get all the blame. But... Nagumo, if he does it himself, it's, it's a bit easier, more influential. So on top of that, can he fight? Probably. We saw him run in season two, right? Before the Manabu and Koji duel, Nagumo was actually one of the far, uh, people that actually took the baton and ran ahead. We didn't see how fast he was, but I want to see more of him, man. An evil Ichinose, huh? Evil Ichinose, good point. Male Kushida or evil Ichinose, like a male evil Ichinose. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, I just need to get more scenes of him. The fact that this scene happens later on when all the students are deciding their groups. And another good point, that's right. Manabu actually said Nagumo has pretty much united not just his class, but the entirety of the second year. A, B, C, D. That's kind of insane. I, I, this Because everybody has their own factions in different class groups. But apparently, this guy has pretty much just united everyone already. The year. And the reason they decided to rearrange the scene is because they cut out the entire part where they decide groups and leaders. I remember this being, Ryun get cut? being one of the lengthiest sections of this volume and they cut it out entirely. And it wasn't like it was some unimportant stuff either. The leaders of groups can literally get expelled and depending on how groups are formed, they receive less or more points. Basically more mechanics, but you know what wasn't cut out? EK and Yamaga scenes. Yamaga saying, you girls better fucking carry your bullshit too. And then them fucking running out first out of cardio power, dude. Hey, Micha made it in here. Let's go, Micha. How groups are formed, they receive less or more points. And we also get Koenji in the Giga chat. Yeah. confronting him and realizing Koenji's plan for this exam. And even.
What? What? There was a Koenji in Nagumo scene? There was a fucking Koenji in Nagumo scene they cut out? What the fuck? Why? 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 Koenji being a Giga Chad and Nagumo confronting him. Nagumo confronts Koenji? And realizing Koenji's plan for this exam. Koenji's plan for this exam? Why? Ah, oh, this is just like the fucking shit we hear in the light novel of like, oh, you know, Anna Koji and you know, um, I, I think it was like uh, Suzune or someone else, like Kushida, I think went to like a uh, palette, right, the famous uh, place, and then Koenji's just in the fucking middle of the room with a bunch of senior girls around them. It's like, why would you cut this shit out? Koenji hardly gets any scenes. Please, just just include that. How? Why would you cut that dialogue out? Maybe they rearrange it. Maybe they'll rearrange it, right? Because sometimes they, they like to, you know, some things get rearranged in different orders. So maybe we'll get like a famous, I don't know, Koenji versus Nagumo scene, but damn, what are you saying? And Koenji has plans for this exam? Koenji's already in a group, right? Yeah, we are in the same dorm with like Albert, Ishizaki, Anokoji, Hachi. I'm just trying to realize our group is fucking cracked. Our group has like all the fucking boys, huh? Holy shit. And even figures out his plan from graduating from the school in- Figures out his plan from graduating from the school- In A class. I in A class. This is something people have been saying, right? That Koenji has plans to get into A class. My guess on why he hasn't done anything in, in volume one or just like, you know, in, in season one and season two, right? He's pretty much just been fucking around, right? I think it's not that big brained. I think it could be just as simple as this dude realizes there's no point. Why would I try in first year? What matters is my placement in third year. Why the fuck would I try so hard? Get to, get to A class in second year and have some other motherfuckers scheme and have that shit like, you know, fall back down. All I need to do is get and just graduate in class A. So why the fuck would I do anything in first year or even second year, right? Isn't it just that simple? Bro's like, no, I'm going to enjoy this school's luxury as most as I can. And when I, need to sh when I need to step up in second or third year just for a bit, I'll do that, get into class A, and I'll graduate. The fuck are you going to do about it? I won't mention what Koenji's plans were in case the anime does decide to show them in the next episode. But hmm. if they do decide to skip it, I'll be annoyed. They also skipped lots of other scenes and rearranged the order of some events, but by far, something they entirely skipped out this episode was the T-Rex chapter. Everybody keeps saying T-Rex, T-Rex, as well as dick measuring. But the T-Rex was mentioned as soon as they were changing. The fuck happened here, guy? Is the T-Rex the dick measuring contest? If you know, you know. I, I don't know! I don't know, it's just a fucking bunch of light novel readers in my chat just fucking memeing with their inside references. I look at chat, it's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I'm still hoping that they'll manage to sneak it into the next episode, but it's not looking good, bros. Hmm. It's one of the most infamous and fan favorite moments of the entire series. Then it has to show up. There's no, I'm not gonna look it up, it's gonna spoil me. If anything, I'll probably just like um, watch it in, in, in the light novels or we'll, we'll watch like Satisfy content on it. <laughs> Satisfy will cover it? Isn't the dude literally dead? Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Isn't he just like gone? Has he made a comeback? Did he just go AFK because Classroom the Elite content was dry? <laughs> it's 20 pages long, the T-Rex scene. Okay. And the final thing that stood out to me was the fact that at the end of the episode, the informant Manabo introduces to Ayano Koji mm. was not supposed to be there. What? He was actually introduced and met Ayano Koji in volume 7.5, which was jammed into episode 13 of season 2. So we already met him before. I see. Yes, they adapted the entire volume in one episode. And now moving it is what on it is. to the production side of things. This episode honestly looked As we say, production side of things immediately pans to the CGI wheels. Looked pretty bad. There were quite a few still frames that linger on for too long. Stuff like this, honestly, I, I like production value of anime, the animation quality is like the lowest priority for me in anime. Um, might be a hot take. What matters for me 
is a compelling plot. I don't give a fuck about the animation style or the quality. You can give me fucking Microsoft Paint level of art as long as the quality of the plot, right? The story is compelling. The story, the soundtrack, and the voice acting. If you got these three down, the animation honestly doesn't need to be good. Now, if you have fucking jarring CGI like the Berserk anime, yeah, we can't have that happening, right? But animation quality is one of the last things that I care about in terms of, you know, what matters to an anime. It, again, it's just plot, compelling story, good voice acting and soundtrack. You got those three, everything just fits into place. Lots of moments that looked really stiff, even though the only motion was characters talking and lip flaps were not even matching in certain scenes. Wait, wait, Ichino says lips weren't matching the scenes? Look at this. Talking and lip flaps were not even matching in certain scenes. Oh, that was a little bit delayed. Ah, it's a little bit lazy. That's lazy. Uh-oh. Let's just hope that they're saving the budget for the future episodes. Plus, with an anime like Classroom Elite, where the content is pretty much heavily focused on the dialogue, not really the action. There are action scenes, and when the action scenes happen, they'll put all the budget towards it. But, like, you know, like, I don't care about the art and the animation of the series. I just give a fuck about the dialogue because because the light novel is already good. The light novel doesn't have art except the illustrations, but it's already so good. Why? The dialogue. So it doesn't really matter. The episode wasn't horrible per se, but it definitely isn't something I can call good. And it's I can right. also give the episode a pass because the contents of the episode were considered some of the least interesting parts of this. Yo, this part, you guys are fucking spamming racist in my chat. Racist, <laughs> racist Mashima, racist Mashima. Why did he only hit Albert? Albert's the only one that fidgeted and moved because he has a bulky muscular body. But yes, Mashima, not only did he fucking take weight loss pills and got a fucking gastric bypass surgery to get this K-pop model. He is also racist, guys, right? That's right. You heard it from me first. Series, and this episode was pretty much set up anyways. But I'm only willing to excuse this episode as long as scenes and moments I'm looking forward to manage to look good. And in case some of you guys think I'm being a bit too harsh, I can confidently give the episode praise when it does deserve it. Okay. Such as the Arisu scene. What about the Yamaga scene? This like this scene was so cold. Again, look at the fucking side eye from these two duos, dude. That fucking idiot trio pseudo isn't here right now, but like look at the side eye. One of my favorite things about Yamauchi is the absolute confidence he has. Because, like, some people are just so fucking stupid and dumb and unaware that they can just be, at, like, so confident in themselves. And it's so fucking annoying, but it's hilarious. It's like, we all know, it memes aside, we all know Yamauchi and Ike are fucking idiots. They're deadweights. But, like, because he's an idiot... He's also super confident in whatever he does. So a scene like this, where these two look down on the supposed queen of the school, is like, it's so funny to me. Shit like this, I just fucking die at. This scene genuinely looked good. The compositing of the scene looked beautiful along mm. with the background. It did look very good, yes. Look at this, right? It, it is really good. And the characters did not look off model like a lot of other earlier scenes. Here's hoping that this episode will remain as the worst this season, and it's only uphill from here. That's it from me, guys. Or that's it from Baseless Yupin. Please go sub to his channel, like his videos. I think I'll definitely be covering his Classroom Be Elite content. And again, I love these cut content video reviews because I am pretty much anime only in terms of how recent we are with the anime coming out, right? We are covering the light novel content on stream too, but yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this coat season, man.